Hi friends, my name is Teresa Geikema and I admit that I was a little taken aback when asked to share something that the Lord has had on my heart and mind as of late. <laughs> and then almost like, oh no, what will I share? Because here's the thing, he's always got something on my heart and mind. So um, I finally narrowed it down. I'm going to share just a little bit of my prayer. Now I started just kind of whispering this prayer to the Lord, honestly, about 10 years ago. And in my prayer time, I just found myself saying, consume me, God, absorb me into yourself. And I just found myself saying it over and over and over again to the point that I realized it wasn't, it wasn't me praying it. It was the spirit whispering it for me, through me, so that truly I would be consumed by the Lord. So I begin to ask the Lord, why was I praying this? Why, why would I want to be consumed? It sounded like something that would be painful, right? To be consumed means, I mean, in my mind meant to be eaten up, to be consumed. So why would I be, want to be consumed by the Lord? So I continued to to pray it because I realized it was what I was supposed to be praying, even though I wasn't completely understanding. I had asked the Lord to show me and I knew that he would. And so it was several weeks of this, consume me, Lord, but show me why this is my prayer. Um, and then I began to have eyes to see people around me who were being consumed by so many other things. So I began obviously to have this rhema and he was so gracious. He did it like in this gradual sense, <laughs> and it just now hit me so that I could absorb it into myself. But so that was my prayer. Consume me and absorb me into yourself. I began to notice that others are being consumed by many other things. I began to notice moms and dads who were consumed with the need to make sure their kids had the best the best clothing, went to the best schools, were part of the best clubs and social activities. Not that those things are bad, but these moms and dads were consumed by it. It was running, ruling their lives. I began to notice people in their career, whatever the, the field was, they were consumed by reaching the top. Were they really reaching the top or were they being consumed by that drive to get to the top? I even began to notice people in ministry people with a true passion and a heart for God, a desire to, to make him known and to build his kingdom. The drive to get things done became a consumption to them, was consuming them. So they were no longer like in love with the Lord of the work. They had grown consumed by the work of the Lord. And so I began to realize, oh, Lord, if I'm consumed by you, I won't be consumed by these other things. If my life is filled with you, it can't be filled with these other things. But that's backwards. That's backwards. To be consumed by God is not the same as consuming God, right? So if I'm filled with him, that's not the same thing as, as him being filled with me. And so I still had all these questions. What does this mean? All right, so here's one thing you have to know about me. I am an animal lover. I cannot explain it any other way than it's just how the Lord made me. So I have discovered about myself that the more I understand animals and how we as mankind take dominion and care for them and provide for them, the more I'm able to understand how the Lord as our Heavenly Father cares for us. Okay? So in my prayer of Lord, show me what it means to be consumed by you, I was reminded of the anglerfish. Okay? That's a weird animal. It's an altogether different beast. If you ever saw the movie Finding Nemo, then of course you saw a cartoon version of it. Anglerfish live in the deep part of the ocean, often on the floor where it's very dark. And so they have this thing protruding out of their head with almost like a light on the end of it. And they use that to lure in their prey. That's an anglerfish, okay. What is really, really, really weird about the anglerfish is the males are about the size of my thumb. The females are about the size of a basketball. Well, I guess I'd be bigger than that. Bizarre creatures, bizarre creatures. But so, 
Another thing I want to know about me is I love to write. And so if you don't mind, I'm just going to read to you what I wrote about my studies of the anglerfish simply because it's just easier. Okay. So I asked the Lord and I was reminded of the anglerfish, right? The male is much smaller than the female, and in order for him to fulfill his purpose, reproducing and repopulating, he must attach himself to the female. After a certain point in maturity, if he hasn't attached himself to the female, he'll die. He has not been created to be able to survive on his own. Once the male anglerfish attaches himself to the female, his body becomes literally fused to hers. He is literally absorbed into the female. The bloodstream of the two fishes become connected, and the male is now totally dependent upon the female for nourishment. As he begins to degenerate, his eyes grow smaller until he eventually loses them. He now sees only what she sees, and his life is literally sourced by her life. He has no function or purpose apart from her. In essence, he loses himself into her to fulfill his purpose. So, of, of course, I wondered if this hurt, right? But I'm inclined to think that it doesn't. As the anglerfish gradually loses his life, giving up what he wants new, he is beginning, in essence, to fulfill his purpose and his destiny. So if the male anglerfish were to live apart from the female, he wouldn't live for long. He would be consumed by some predatory fish or starve to death. Truly, his life is found in being connected to, consumed by, and absorbed into the female. He never chooses not to be connected to the female, for in so doing, he would find certain death. So I think it's amazing that in being fully connected to God, we can see as he sees. We somehow have the blood of Christ as our own blood, right? We should rely on him as our life source in all things. So my question is, are you being consumed? And if so, by what? We're going to be consumed by something, but we have we can choose what we're consumed by. And I'd like to close by reading 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 6. For we know that if our temporary earthly dwelling is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal dwelling in the heavens, not made with hands, Indeed, we groan in this body, desiring to put on our dwelling from heaven, since when we are clothed, we will be found naked. Indeed, we groan while we're in this tent, burdened as we are, because we do not want to be unclothed, but clothed, so that mortality may be swallowed up by life. And the one who prepared for us this very purpose is God, who gave us the Spirit as a down payment. So we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. I don't know if it's typical to pray at the end of these little videos, but I want to do that real quick. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for giving us all things for life and godliness. Thank you, Lord, for drawing us closer to yourself. Thank you, Lord, for consuming us if we will just grab on to you. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that they will, they will be drawn to the light of your word. They will be drawn to you. They will grab onto you. They will be fused and they become one with you. They will lose their vision for the things of the earth. They will see only as you see. And their very life source will be you. I pray that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done, that you would be glorified, and that people would come to know you. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for letting me share.